everyone, and thank you so much for joining me. My name is Christine Shore, and I am VP of Research at TipRanks. And this week, peak earnings season rolls on. We've got over 600 companies set to report, mostly within the healthcare, uh, tech, indus industrials, as well as energy sector, which we're really going to be paying attention to, see how those names have been impacted by last week's oil route, which is continuing on into this week. Um, we've also got some economic data we're going to be looking out for, starting with Case Shiller out tomorrow, followed by Q1 GDP, that all-important number we've been curious about reporting on Wednesday, and then on Thursday, always taking a look at jobless claims. So before we get into that, let's just kind of recap what happened last week. As you recall, we kicked off the week really excited about big tech and FANG names that we're reporting. Netflix kicked us off on Tuesday, and despite being one of the favorite stay-at-home names, they did miss on the bottom line by eight cents. So earnings per share came in eight cents lower than analysts were expecting. Slightly beat on revenues, but the real clincher was global uh, subscriber net additions. And so that number actually doubled for what analysts were expecting, came in at 15.8 million. Sell side analysts were expecting around 8.2 million. So that number, the company said, is expected to increase in Q2, so the quarter we're in now, and then slowly back off as lockdown mandates around the globe um, are uh, loosened up a little bit. So we are expecting better numbers in Q2, but maybe not as good in the second half. Intel, also one of the big tech names out last week, great results beating on the top and bottom line, reporting year-over-year -year growth based on their cloud computing unit. And analysts had expected this. With so many people working from home now, they saw an increase in laptop demand, cloud computing power. Um, however, they said, don't expect this to continue into the second quarter. They did provide guidance that was lower in Q2 than what analysts were anticipating, and then no guidance for the second half of the year. So continuing this sort of concerning trend we're seeing, where companies just are unwilling to give us any glimpse into what uh, to expect for the second, year, uh, second half of the year, either unwilling or just don't know enough yet. So that was Intel. Um, we also talked quite a bit about uh, the housing market. Um, real quick, just to pull up a screen though on Intel before we move on to housing. You can see still strong. They were a 10 uh, in the last couple of days, down to a nine, all factors looking pretty positive here. And right now the best analysts on tip ranks are calling this a moderate buy. They've got a price target of 62.81, so that's over 6% upside from where we're trading right now. So all in all, Intel still looking pretty strong, even as we're sort of uncertain what the second half of the year will bring. Moving on to housing, we talked about existing home sales and new home sales last week. Both came in even worse than we were anticipating. So existing home sales were down month over month. They had their biggest decline since November of 2015. New home sales had their deepest decline since uh, July of 2013. And so a lot of that was based on weakness in every region, but specifically the West and the Northeast. Uh, we'll continue looking at housing this week when Case Schiller reports tomorrow. And then the other big topic from last week was, of course, Gilead Sciences. So we started the week off with a bit of good news about maybe some promising trials of their antiviral drug um, remdesivir out of University of Chicago. Then towards the end of the week, we got some mixed news uh, out of a study in China saying that perhaps remdesivir was not curing or treating some of the symptoms of COVID-19 as the uh, University of Chicago trial suggested. Gilead, though, came out and said those results from the trial in China were inconclusive and that the uh, World Health Organization document that leaked saying that um, had inappropriate characterization. So Gilead reports on Thursday. We're all going to expect to hear more about this uh, when they come out after the bell on that day, because right now we're, no one's really sure what to think. Um, so moving on, kind of what we're expecting this week and staying within healthcare, we do get a couple of other names that are working on vaccines and treatments that are out with earnings this week. Two big ones, Pfizer and Amgen. So Pfizer has been working on a vaccination in conjunction with BioNTech, just cleared to start human testing this week in Germany. They're expected to clear in the US uh, for approval shortly. Um, otherwise, they've been mum on their vaccine. You know, they haven't said too much, which is why we're really gonna be paying attention uh, on the call this week. But right now you can see we have a SMART score of 10 on Pfizer. And just as a reminder, the SMART score is a calculation that we do 
um, based on eight indicators that we find to be historically most predictive of future stock performance. So things like analyst ratings, activity with hedge funds and insiders, as well as retail investors, sentiment from financial bloggers and news sources, and then of course, technicals and fundamentals. So Pfizer are looking pretty strong across the board. We see a couple negative things here with technicals and uh, retail investors. But overall, uh, the best analysts on our platform are calling this stock a hold with a current price target of 38.65. So um, Pfizer being one of the names out this week. And then, like I said, also Amgen. Um, the other name that I want to take a look at in the healthcare space, um, also you know, picking up steam due to cor coronavirus-related shutdowns, it's Teladoc. And this is a name I think a lot of us are just starting to get familiar with, the telemedicine space really picking up here. Um, but with you know lockdowns and you know, just regular uh, doctor's visits no longer being permitted. A lot of people have moved on to virtual visits and Teladoc is a platform that allows for those virtual visits. Company said last month it was experiencing unprecedented daily visit volume since coronavirus really sort of picked up here in the US. So in March, uh, they've seen demand shoot up about to about 15,000 visits requested per day. That's up 50% from the weeks prior to that. So it looks like telemedicine is here to stay. You can see we've got a smart score of 10 here, looking strong across the board, a little bit of weak there on return on equity. And the best analysts on our platform calling this a moderate buy with a price target of 150. Um, so Teladoc, I think, is, is one to watch here. Also this week, like I mentioned, we get a handful of huge industrial names reporting, including Caterpillar, always seen as a bellwether of global growth. Um, going to be an interesting quarter for them. Right now, expected to report a year-over-year -year decline in earnings of 43%, revenue decline of 18%, you know, as their major end markets are, are kind of struggling here. Uh, roughly 45% of Caterpillar's revenues come from energy and transportation industries, followed by construction industries at about 38%. So as you can see, um, right now they're about neutral. We've got a smart score of six, but insider activity news, technicals, all down. Overall though, still a moderate buy from the best analysts on our platform with a price target of 145.75. Um, we do get some other industrials this week, Honeywell and 3M. They've gotten a bit of a boost during this time. 3M out with earnings tomorrow, Honeywell on Friday. Both of these companies along with Owens and Miner have received Pentagon contracts to make 39 million N95 masks for healthcare workers as a part of the Defense Protection Act. That contract totals 133 million. So 3M already been doing great this as a part of coronavirus as people stock up on masks. You can hardly find their masks anywhere right now. But similar to CAT, their end markets are still struggling. So for that reason, you can see if we go to 3M here, they are rated an underperform right now. So uh, analysts calling this a hold, insider activity, lots of shares sold, hedge fund activity. Um, and so overall, looking for a price target of 142, almost 5% of downside from where we are right now. And of course, you can't talk industrials without talking about energy. They go hand in hand, and we do start to get some results from the energy companies this week. Big names like Chevron and Exxon, you know, already this morning, Energy is not looking to do so well. Diamond Offshore filing for bankruptcy uh, as a part of, you know, the global slowdowns for oil demand due to coronavirus, as well as the price wars. Um, we see oils down over 25% today. Last week, hard week as well. West, West Texas intermediate crude uh, futures contracts for May slid into the negative for the first time in history, meaning if you're a Trader that are owning these futures, you would actually pay someone to take them off your hands. Crude oil did bump up towards the end of the week, but again, like I said today, we're already down 25% as concerns mount about storage of oil. Um, so storage is getting full, and I would expect to see this trend continue this week. Just hopping over to Exxon real quick, the largest U.S. oil company, and we are... They were a five yesterday, they've dropped down to a four, and you're seeing some of these indicators here drop. Um, overall, the analysts, uh, best analysts on tip ranks are calling this a moderate sell, price target of 50. Um, so we'll be looking at those big oil companies this week. 
Now to move on to some of our econ data that's out this week, as I mentioned, we are certainly going to be looking at housing once again with Case Schiller. They report tomorrow, great indication of where home prices are, where they're going. Um, and I would say this is more important to consumer sentiment than watching the stock market because more Americans own homes than they own equities. Right now, analysts are expecting that home prices will either stay flat or slightly decline over the next 12 to 18 months. So we'll wait to hear about February's results tomorrow. Uh, and then Wednesday, Q1 GDP, where is it going to fall? So we've been hearing estimates across the board. Uh, New York Fed's now cast is looking for Q1 GDP to come in at a slight decline of negative 0.4%. Some of the banks have been a little harsher. Goldman Sachs out uh, with an estimate of negative 9%. JP Morgan thinks that the U.S. economy contracted 10% in Q1, so we'll see who's right. We know Q1 is just the precursor to Q2, which is expected to be much worse off as far as GDP is concerned. And as always, we get those jobless claims on Thursday, anticipating that those uh, are going to continue trending down like we've seen over the last couple of weeks. But now with that new injection of $484 billion into the Paycheck Protection Program, we're going to turn our focus to continuing claims, so those that are currently receiving benefits. Because with this new funding, small businesses should be able to take their furloughed employees, get them back on the payroll. So we'll want to see that continuing claims also decrease in the weeks ahead. So that's it. That's everything we're watching this week. Thanks so much for joining me. We really appreciate it. Uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. We love hearing from you. And we'll be here again next week, same place, same time, discussing more of peak earnings season, markets, and the economy. Until then, take care.